shamefully in a courtroom, surrounded by demons on my left and angels on my right, Satan as the persecutor holding millions of records about my life and God, sitting on a throne with a mighty gavel in his hand. I had no lawyer, placed on trial for things such as lying, stealing, and fornication, for this was the beginning of my tribulation, for there was no reason to plead an innocent statement all the evidence was sitting right there with Satan. The demons smiled as tears rolled down the judge's eyes, for they clearly knew that now was the hour of my demise. But wait, in came a light shining so bright that the demons smiling suddenly jumped with fright, and the man that walked in that night was none other than Jesus Christ. Darkness departed to give way, and glory was all the angels could say. As the man that walked in that night pulled out a lighter and immediately set Satan's records against me on fire. He took the sentence file and erased my name, looked at me in the eyes and said, Daughter, I'll take the blame. Handcuffs were placed on this man and he was thrown to the ground. The entire courtroom gasped at this horrendous sound and the sudden seized the beat of his heart. The man that walked in glowing had now become dark. I did this to him. My lying, my stealing, my cheating. And he took the pain and spent three days in the hell that I was to go to for eternity. I left the courtroom that day and there was nothing I could say. I was found innocent, for Christ handled the debt that I was to pay. This type of love is more than you could give to a girlfriend, boyfriend, husband, wife. This man died for me. I owe him my life. And even though my life is not at all worth it, how could you ever trade preference for perfect? See, I gave my life to Christ and suddenly picked up a mop. The lying, cursing, cheating, all that had to stop because my life had been bought. And it'd be a shame to sit there and do nothing but let it rot. I'm not perfect, and the will to sin hasn't completely diminished from my life. But I believe Jesus' words when he died for me on that cross. It is finished.
saw their faith. So it wasn't even the man's faith that he saw. It was the faith of his friends. So again, I ask you, who is in your corner? Do you have one or two faithful friends that when you are down, they're able to build you up in prayer? You need to know that you know that you know that God will never leave you nor forsake you. Hallelujah. God will never ever leave you nor forsake you. You need to know that because there are going to come times when you're going to feel like you're by yourself. of God. So I pray that God will release a joy in your spirit that won't be quenched by the situations that you go through. That the joy of the Lord will be your strength Praise the Lord, everyone. What an amazing service we've been having so far. And we're going to get straight into the word of God today. So we're going to go into the book of 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel chapter 6, 2 Samuel chapter 6. And just follow along as I read here today. Then David gathered all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000, and David arose and went with all the people who were with him from Baal Judah to bring up there the ark of the Lord, which is called the name of the Lord of hosts who sits enthroned in the cherubim. And they carried the ark of God on a new cart and brought it to the house of Abinadab, who was on the hill, and Uzzah and Ohio, the sons of Abinadab, were driving the new cart with the ark of God, and Ohio went before the ark. So just to recap here, what has happened is that David had to go and recover the Ark of the Lord from the Philistines. They had destroyed the Philistine army and they had taken back the Ark of the Lord. And so they tried to get it back to Jerusalem because where the Ark of the Lord is, is the presence of God. And so they wanted to get back to Jerusalem. So back to verse 5. And David and all the house of Israel were making merry before the Lord with songs and lyres and harps and tambourines and castanets and cymbals. And when they came to the threshing floor of Nacon, Uzzah put out his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it for the oxen stumbled. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah and God struck him down there because of his error. And he died there beside the ark of God. And David was angry because the Lord had burst forth against Uzzah. And that place is called Per Uzzah. That place is now called Per Uzzah, which means the bursting forth upon Uzzah. And David was afraid of the Lord that day. And he said, how can the ark of the Lord not come to me? How can the ark of the Lord come to me? So David was not willing to take the ark of the Lord into the city of David. But David took it aside to the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite. And the ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite for three months. And the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and all of his household. And it was told to King David. So King David heard that the ark of the Lord was blessed in the house of Obed-Edom. And all that belongs to him because of the ark of the Lord. And so David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom to the city of David with rejoicing. And those who bore the ark of the Lord had gone six steps, sacrificed an ox and a fattened animal. And David danced before the Lord with all of his might. And he was wearing an ephod, a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the horn. And today I want to talk to you for a few moments on the topic of death, praise and glory. Death, praise and glory. So right now I want you to type in the comments right now, death, praise and glory. Death, praise, and glory. So we find in this story here in the book of Second Samuel chapter 6 that David was adamant that the house of God needed to be back where it needed to be in the city of David. He wanted to bring back the ark of the Lord from the Philistines because when they had the ark of the Lord is when they felt they had the power. Sometimes we have to look in our lives. The ark of the Lord here represents the presence of God. It represents the presence of God, the tangible glory of God, the Shekinah glory of God is represented by the ark of the Lord. So it was important 
important for David that he had praise with him, that he had the ark of the Lord. So as you can imagine, they have taken the ark back from the chill from the Philistines army. He feels like he's rejoicing. He feels like he's done a great thing. So they put the ark of God on a new cart, on a new cart. Let me just pause here for a moment. Not everything that is new is for you. Huh? Not everything that is new is for you. You need to know that there are some things that have been tried and tested. And as long as they're still working, that's what you need to use in order to see what is God doing in this season. So we can see there that, that David probably thought he was being smart, he was being respectful, but he wasn't following the instructions that God had given to him previously. Listen, I said this when I preached the last time that we need to be aware of what is God saying in the season? What is God doing in that moment? And David being the king of Israel, his responsibility was to listen to the voice of God, was to know what is God doing right now and what should we be doing in this season? So they put the ark of the Lord on a new cart and they think they're doing something great. And the ark stays in the house of Abinadab. So Uzzah was in that house. And so when Uzzah sees the car and they, you know, he got comfortable. Hallelujah. He got comfortable and so familiar with the presence of God being in his home that when they went out into the street, he behaved as if he was familiar. And I want you to know that you, you watching this right now, live and on the replay, that you are peculiar, that you are holy and set apart and sanctified, which means that you have been made for a particular purpose. Your purpose, your entire life is to bring forth the glory of God. I want you to write that now in the comments. I carry the glory of God. I carry the glory of God. So we're getting straight through into this word today. So I dare you to share this broadcast right now and tag about seven people so they will also be a part of what's going on here today. Let's get back to this. Death, praise and glory. Death, praise and glory in that order. Death, praise and glory. Hallelujah. And so when, 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 when we get too familiar with what God is doing, you know, there's, there, there's a balance that we have to have as people of God, a balance between knowing who God is and also having that fear, having that reverence for his presence, knowing that there is a way that we approach him. There is a way that we draw near to him. There is a way that we come before the presence of God with thankfulness, with praise, but not always that familiarity of it's just common things. You know how you have certain clothes and certain items that you wear every day and then you have more formal attire I think it's just like that that sometimes we can get so familiar with the presence of God that we behave as if it's just nothing yes I understand that God is your father yes I understand that the Holy Spirit fire lives inside of you but we must remember that we have been set apart for his glory that we have been set apart to be used by God in the time that we are living okay so so remember this, I carry the glory. Do me a favor and write that in the comments one more time. I carry the glory. So as you can imagine, so, so, so because Uzzah felt familiar with the presence of God, he forgot the reverence that was due to the glory. And so as they're walking along, they're walking along, going back to the city of David with their king, he puts his hand out to stop the ark from falling down. And listen, when you mishandle the presence of God, there can be dire consequences. So no, when you mishandle this as well, you carry the glory of God. So I don't want you to live a life that is less than what Jesus paid for. He paid that you might have the abundant life. He paid that when you lay hands on the sick, they will recover. He paid so that when you touch any deadly thing, it will not hurt you. So if you're watching this right now and you are in pain or you are sick, I want you to repeat these words today. It will not hurt me. And I believe that even as we go forth in this message where we're talking about death, praise and glory, that you'll be healed as you are watching this today. We don't need to lay hands on you. We don't need to come near you. We just need to speak the words and know that you are healed in the name of Jesus. One more time, write that for me in the comments. I carry 
the glory. So that means that you cannot mishandle and misappropriate the things that you do in the world. That means that you need to behave differently to your friends. That you need to behave differently to your peers because guess what? You carry the glory. The Shekinah glory, the presence of God, the weighty presence of the Father, of Jesus, of the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. You are powerful. You are royal. You are peculiar. And you have been born for such a time as this. I feel the glory in the room today and I just know that wherever you are all over the world that you are feeling this now also that you carry the presence of God. That wherever you go it is a glory filled area you know why? Because you have arrived hallelujah. When you walk into a building your aura, your presence the presence, the glory of God the magnificent Shekinah glory will fill that place but you need to be aware and do not mishandle the glory of God like Uzzah did. So Uzzah touches the, 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 the ark as he steadies it as, as because they put it on a new ark. <laughs> they, didn't, they, didn't, they didn't even look at the instructions that was given to them. But they, they put the ark of the Lord on a new cart. So he goes to stop the ark, the, the ark from falling on the ground, which looks like a good thing. <laughs> Let me just pause there for a second, brothers and sisters. Not everything that looks good is for you. Not everything that sounds good is for you. Not everything that tastes good and feels good and feels like a good idea is not always a God idea. So as much as it was a good idea for him to put it on a new cart, and as much as it was a good idea for us to reach out and touch the ark in order to make sure the glory didn't fall down, it was not what he should be doing at that time. So do not mishandle the glory that you have been given, the glory that you carry even now, the weighty presence of glory that's in your life. Hallelujah. Death, praise and glory. And so as Uzzah puts his hand onto the ark, we see in the word of God in 2 Samuel chapter 6, that as he touches it, the Bible says that God's anger turns towards Uzzah and Uzzah dies instantly on the spot. And many people have wondered, why did Uzzah die? Why did God choose to do that? Why did Uzzah die? And I want to but just, just kind of share with you today that I believe the reason why he died was to show us what happens when we get too familiar with the presence, when we mishandle who we are, who God has called us to be, then we will miss the mark, we will miss the moment and death will come. Death, spiritual death, the death, but also, but also, but also, death sometimes has to happen in our own lives. Jesus lets us know that if we, that, 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 that the resurrection of his body showed us what happens when something dies to sin, when something allows death to take hold of it and then is resurrected to new life. Paul lets us know in Romans that we die daily, that we need to crucify the flesh daily. So death can be a good thing as well. So we know that we must die daily, that we must allow ourselves to be presented as holy and acceptable vessels of the Holy Ghost that carry the glory everywhere we go. So one more time, write that for me in the comments. I carry the glory. I carry the glory. Hallelujah. You carry the fire of the Holy Ghost. You carry the spirit of the Lord everywhere you go. So do not mishandle yourself. Do not think that your life is nothing. Do not think that you can just do anything, go anywhere, say anything, do anything and that nothing happens. So many times there are consequences that we have to pay for the things that we do. And in this instance, the consequence of being too familiar, of not following instructions, was that Uzzah died on the spot. And then we see that David is upset because he's like, God, why are you doing this to my people? Why are you doing that? Because once again, he also got too familiar. God had already laid out the blueprint for him. God had already shown him what he should do and how he should be. And yet he decided, I'm going to do what I want. 
Let me tell you something. You don't get to do what you want. You get to do what God wants. And when your mind is renewed, only then Paul lets us know. When you have the renewed mind, then you have the mind of Christ. So I want to ask you a question today. Do you want to carry the glory? Do you want to live a life that is power filled? Then you need to die to yourself. You need to die to your opinions, to your views and allow God to renew your mind and now God to transform your mind into more and more of who he is and what he's saying so here we are David is concerned because he's wondering how am I going to get the ark of the Lord back to the city if God is going to kill people that try to help me bring it there guess what? We don't need to help God out. We need to follow the instructions that he gives us. We need to follow his word, follow his commandments and go according to the plan that he sets for us. So because he gets nervous, they put, listen, they put the ark of the Lord in the house of Obed-Edom. 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 So the Ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obed-Edom for three months. For three months. The Ark of the Lord remained in Obed-Edom's house for three months. Hallelujah. And there's significance on that. There is significance in that. And I also want to read another passage because it's also in, um, in 1 Chronicles chapter 13 as well. There's a bit of the story there. So as the Ark stays in the house of Obed-Edom, we see that while it is there for three months, Obed-Edom and his family become blessed and blessed blessed and blessed. The Lord blessed the household of Obed-Edom and all that he had. Hallelujah. And I, I want to say, I want to offer it for you today that the reason why God blessed the house of Obed-Edom and didn't kill Obed-Edom because they understood and they reverenced and they knew how to host the presence of God. So when you praise God and you host his presence in a way that is pleasing to him, in a way that will bring you blessings and not curses to your household, then and only then can we bring back the glory <laughs> so i'm getting i'm getting i'm getting there to the end of our message here today but do me a favor go ahead and hit that share button one more time and let some more people come on in tag a couple of your family members so they can understand how we can bring back the glory to our lives and allow god's glory to be seen and reign over our lives and it says that god blessed Obed Edom the Gittite, who was also a Levite. I, I didn't even, I forgot to tell you earlier that Uzzah was a Levite too. And he should have known how to behave. But because they had too much familiarity with the presence, they forgot to reverence who God was. He forgot that it's not just a piece of furniture. That just because I had the spirit of God inside of me doesn't mean that I can do whatever I want. It means that I need to carry myself according to the calling by which we have been called to. Carry Carry yourself as though you are a joint heir to the kingdom of heaven. Carry yourself as though you are a glory carrier. Carry yourself as though you host the very presence of God on the earth. So I, 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 I want to let you know that I believe that Obed Edom and his family, they knew how to host the presence. They knew how to praise. They knew how to intercede. And I want to know, are there two or three of you out there who are ready to host the presence of God, that even after death, that even after seeing the wrath of God, that you will be able to say, you know what, I saw what happened over there and I don't want that to happen to me. So I am going to host the presence of God. I'm going to praise my way through my pain. I'm going to praise my way through my circumstances and know that the God I serve, he is more than able. So the house of Obed-Edom was blessed for three months straight for three months they were able to host the tangible glory of God and the glory fell 
on his family. And it says he blessed him and all that he had. Hallelujah. So I want to challenge you today that if you learn to praise God, if you learn to host his presence, that the glory of God will come on you, your household, and on everybody that you know. That there will be a move of God in the earth because of your obedience, because of how you manage and how you host the very presence of God. Signs and wonders will follow those that believe. That's you. Signs and wonders will follow those that believe. That's you. And in the name of Jesus, I just declare over this house today that every single one of you will learn that there's death, then there's praise, and then there's glory. I want to let you know today that glory is coming to your house. That glory is coming to your nation. If you learn to praise God, if you learn to praise God and host his presence in the way that he needs it to be done. And so it says <laughs> that King David heard about it. So previously we had read that David was upset because he wondered, God, why have you done this? I'm trying to bring back the presence, but yet you're making things go wrong. You're allowing these people to die. You're bringing um, death in the camp. You're bringing doubt amongst the people. You're allowing me to look bad. <laughs> Listen, sometimes, 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 sometimes we will need to be taken down a peg or two so that we can remember and have reverence for the things of God. And I wonder who out there today needs to come back and have a holy reverence for the things of God. Who needs to come and understand that if I will just host the very presence of God, if I will allow his glory to reside in my house, in my home, in my family, that I will be be blessed beyond measure for three months straight the Lord said that he blessed him they were blessed 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 so much so that the king heard about it and when he heard about it he said oh no oh no oh no it's time for me to get the glory back the glory is coming back to us the glory is coming back so David goes and he gets the ark and it says that they, 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 they he got the ark from the house of Obed Edom and he said that he began to rejoice. Hallelujah. You want to know how you're going to get through to your next level? You need to rejoice. You need to praise God and remember everything that he has done. Remember his promises. Remember his faithfulness. Don't just look at your present circumstances and use that. David could have remained with a bad attitude. He could have remained angry at God, but instead he chose to praise. And the Bible says that they, they took six steps one they took two three four five six six steps and then they made a sacrifice so that's what you need to do in this season is to remember take six steps and then remember God take six steps and give him a sacrifice of praise take six steps and remember that the God of your salvation is surely able to deliver I don't want you to forget what God has done in the past. I don't want you to forget the promises that God has over your life. They are yes and amen. So David changes attitude. Guess what? When you praise, no matter how you feel, then you will begin to see changes in your circumstances. So as David decided to forget about the death of Uzzah, but he remembered the blessing of Obed-Edom, and he remembered exactly what God had told him to do, so then we see that as they begin to praise and as they begin to praise God and move forward to moving towards the city of Jerusalem, it says that David brought the house of Israel, brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the horn. So when you praise God, you're able to bring back the glory over something that was dead. And we may mourn the death of dead things. Yes, it's right to mourn when things go wrong when things don't go to plan or when we have slipped up but I dare you today not to stay there do not stay and mourn something that is gone allow yourself a chance to say you know what regardless of what has happened I'm going to choose to praise God so I can redeem and bring back the glory so that God can get his full reward we want to see Jesus get everything that he paid for he's coming back for a victorious bride, not a malnourished desperate bride who's just begging him to come back, no you have the power, 
You have the power. You have been given all authority under heaven. And I want to speak to every single person who feels as though they don't have anything to offer. Who feels as though your dreams are dead. Or you feel as though that, that God has forgotten you. But I dare you in this moment to get your praise together. Hallelujah. Get your praise together so that you can bring back the glory. When you praise God, then the glory will fall. Listen, I know that it's hard. I know that it's not easy to do this. I can only imagine how David felt. He must have felt embarrassed, wondering why would God do that? The Bible said that he was angry. He was angry at God. Yes, we might be angry at God because we thought we were doing the good and we thought we were going the right way, but things didn't go according to plan. But I dare you that if you start to praise God, there is something about when we host the presence of the Holy Spirit, that it begins to change our attitude. It begins to change the way we think and it changes the way we behave. And then we become receptive to the glory of of God. So just take a moment right now to lift up praises before the King of Kings. Lift up praises before the Lord of Lords. Allow your spirit to begin to speak out. Speak out. Begin to sing out in the spirit right now and allow the Lord to come on in and say, God, I know who you are. God, I believe you. I believe you're who you say you are. And I want the glory to come back to my life. I want the glory to come back to my house. I want the glory to come back wherever I may be in the name of Jesus. God, we want your glory more than anything else. We want to see your glory in this earth. We want to see your glory in this earth. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1, I pray that your eyes will be illuminated. And in the next verse, it says this. It says this. It says that your life will be an advert for the glory of God. Hallelujah. And I believe that there are about five of you watching this right now who are going to be an advert for the glory of God. If that's you, write that in the comments right now and say, that's me. That's me. I am an advert for the glory of God. Because when people see that in the midst of sickness, in the midst of death, in the midst of despair, that you chose not to have a bad attitude, that even if you got angry for a moment like David did in his scripture, he got angry, but then when he remembered the God that he served, then he praised God. Then he praised God. Then he praised God with all of his might so they could say, God has brought the glory back to our nation, that God has brought the glory back to our people. And we say, God, we thank you for your glory. God, we thank you for your presence that's fallen even now. We thank you, God, that you are everything. You're everything to us. And that your glory falls like never, ever, ever before. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. God will allow the glory, hallelujah, hallelujah. There's a glory that's coming to your house that's going to be better than you could ever dream of. That's going to be better than you could ever imagine. That's going to be better than anything you could ever plan. Because guess what? God wants to get the glory. He'll always get the glory out of your life. Your life will be an advert for the glory of God. So when they bless you, <laughs> when they bless you, they'll remember what happened in your Uzzah. But then they'll also remember what happened in your Obed Eden. And they will see, wow, look at how she's praised God despite it. Yes, she was angry for a moment, but look how she turned things around when she remembered who God was and what he's done in her life. Are you going to be somebody like that? Are you going to sit and just wallow in self-pity and say, God, you've forsaken me. God, you left me alone. Or are you going to say, I'm going to praise my way through. I'm going to praise in this situation knowing that God is faithful. Death, praise, and glory. Glory is coming to your house. Glory is coming to your house. 
there's a glory that is over your house even now. That as you praise God and as you begin to remember all of the things that he has done, hallelujah, you start to praise. Listen, listen, let, let me just tell you this one more thing before we close out today. Is this, is that sometimes, regardless of your attitude, you need to make a choice. Do you think that I wake up every day and I feel like praising God? Do you feel like I wake up every day and I'm like, wow, this is going to be an amazing day just for the heck of it? No, I say those things because the more I tell my spirit, my subconscious mind, the more I tell my soul what to think is the more that my spirit becomes alive and then things start to change in my day. So you need to adopt that as well. You get to decide, change your attitude, change your opinion, change your mind right now. Drop the attitude and allow God to come on in and then you will see the glory come in your life. Death, praise and name God. So I wanna to speak to you right now really quickly. I'm gonna pray over every single one of you. Whether you know Jesus or not, Holy Spirit wants to come and captivate you no matter what, so you can have the glory-filled life. So I'm going to pray over you in the name of Jesus. God, we just declare over every single person that's watching right now that they will be filled with the glory of the presence of your Spirit. That they will know that you are God and you are God alone. That you will captivate them. You will com- you will completely possess them with your power like never before. Some of you are beginning to shake. Some of you are feeling heat in your chest. Some of you are feeling heat on your head. That is the glory glory of God, the fire of God is coming on you right now in the name of Jesus. You're beginning to feel the presence of God just come over you. And I believe that there are many of you watching right now who are going to begin to speak in tongues in the name of Jesus as the fire of the Holy Spirit is being blasted over you in the name of Jesus. Glory is coming, glory is coming, glory is coming in the name of Jesus. And if you've experienced something that you've never experienced before, maybe you start to speak in tongues, maybe you're crying, maybe you're shaking, maybe you're feeling heat, do write those things in the comments. And if you've been healed, we talked about that some moments ago, if you've been healed today, you need to write that in the comments right now as well, because the testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy. And the more that we share what God is doing, is the more God does more things. And if this is your first time joining us today, then please do comment so that we can get to know you, so we can communicate with you and see how you can have more of the fire of the Holy Spirit and join the great family of God, the church worldwide. God bless you and I pray that you are blessed for the rest of your week. Death, 